And for the headlines, weather forecast. Intertropical Convergence Zone brings variable weather to Southern Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Local News A Japanese missionary residing alone in his home in Barangay Kauswagan in the city was found dead. The Kokpo conducted a simulation exercise at a private bank on Pamenta Boulevard, Barangay Carmen. The private organizer charging high rents at the Higalaay Festival Market on Rio Boulevard will be summoned by the Committee on Ways and Means. Councillor Abadai questions the 50 million peso rental fee for the Higalaay market on Rio Boulevard. National News Comelec plans to issue digital voter IDs for overseas voters. A survivor of Tokhang who feigned death seeks to reopen the case against police officers. International News Singapore's State investor Temasek shifts focus to the U.S. following underperformance in China. Entertainment Did Vice Ganda reprimand Jackie because of the viral video in La Union? Aya Arceta shares her journey to Bini in Kuan on One. Sports MMA Pasho anticipates Brooks will handle business against Ballard. Volleyball NU kicks off Super League campaign against Enderon. International feature The S&P 500 and Nasdaq reach new highs while European stock exchange decline. National feature Supporting K-pop stars transcends age for a grandmother and hypen fan. Trivia What led to the remaining of all social media platforms as Meta? If you found this segment informative, don't forget to click the thumbs up button, subscribe to stay updated with our latest news, and share this broadcast with your friends and family. Your support helps us to keep you informed. Help us get 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, subscribing, and sharing our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts your visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find way and stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being a part of our community and supporting quality journalism. Good morning, Philippines. Magana umaga, Luzon. Ug may adla, Visayas, at Mindanao. Today is Wednesday, July 10, 2024. I am Athalia P. Saniel. Weather forecast, intertropical convergence zone brings variable weather to southern zone, Visayas, and Pindanao. Today, the ITCZ has swept across southern zone, Visayas, and Mindanao, ushering in a medley of weather conditions. Residents woke to sporadic rain showers and gusty winds with localized thunderstorms forecasted throughout the day. In response to the shifting weather patterns, authorities have advised the public to remain vigilant and stay updated with weather bulletins from the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration. Travelers and commuters are urged to exercise caution on the roads due to the potentially slippery conditions caused by the rain. The ITCZ, a band of converging trade winds near the equator known for its fluctuating Weather effects is expected to continue influencing these regions in the coming days. Pagasa continues to monitor developments closely and encourages everyone to take necessary precautions to ensure safety during this period of variable weather. 
Stay tuned for further updates as the situation develops. Local news. A Japanese missionary residing alone in his home in Barangay Kaoswagan in the city was found dead. A foreign national was found dead inside his home in Zone 2, Barangay Kaoswagan in the city. The victim was identified as Hokada Fushinishi, 78 years old and a Japanese national. Initial investigations suggest the victim was a missionary which brought him to the city. He had been living alone in a large house in the city since 2008. According to Jumar Manayaga, a friend of the victim, the victim used to have assistance but lost trust after being robbed, which led him to decide to live alone with only his pet dog. It was also noted that the victim had not been seen outside his home for nearly two weeks prompting him to be reported to the police to check on his well-being. However, it was discovered that he had passed away in the comfort room, already lifeless and decomposed. Meanwhile, Manayaga is contacting the victim's family to inform them of what happened. Once your trust is broken, perhaps he will no longer trust others. He believed that he was alone in his field. M my story was that the email was so clear. According to the police station 4 Carmen Commander Police Major Mantala, there was no foul play in the victim's death. An autopsy will be conducted on the victim's body to determine the true cause of death. No foul play was found in the area of the incident. The victim's personal effects were still intact, with no signs of a struggle. We will conduct an autopsy to determine conclusively that this person was not killed. The COPPO conducted a simulation exercise at a private bank on Valmenta Boulevard, Barangay Carmen. The Cagayan de Oro City Police Office conducted a simulation exercise at a private bank on Valmenta Boulevard, Barangay Carmen in the city. This aimed to assess the readiness of COPPO personnel in responding to incidents such as bank robberies and unattended luggage. The exercise also evaluated the response time of the police. According to the COCPO spokesperson police, Lieutenant Colonel Evan Vinyas, based on the assessment, it was found that there are several areas within COCPO that need enhancement in terms of responding to such situations. The Cagayan de Oro City Police Office conducted a training exercise with personnel today aimed to assessing the skill level of our staff in handling scenarios like this. Our goal is to effectively manage and respond immediately with our personnel. We conducted an evaluation with our evaluators in their scenario, a bank robbery and attendant luggage. Specifically on Vamenta Boulevard, Carmen Cagayan de Oro City, in the scenario entered two people who declared a gun or hold up, and there was already an injured because of the security guard was hit. But this was just an exercise, props of the scenario that became the actor in the talk. The private organizer charging high rents at the Higalaai Festival Market on Rio Boulevard will be summoned by the Committee on Ways and Means. The Committee on Ways and Means of the city has called in the alleged private organizer responsible for the high rental fees at the Higalaai Festival Market on Rio Boulevard. This is to thoroughly investigate the reasons behind the exorbitant charges. Councillor George Go King, Chair of the Committee on Ways and Means, expressed surprise yesterday upon receiving a special report from Council Roger Abada regarding the steep rental fees. These fees did not undergo scrutiny by his committee, or by the city council. The rental fee for stalls at the Higalai market on Rio Boulevard is reportedly as high as 50,000 pesos. I was surprised yesterday because this matter did not pass through our committee. Approvals for such matters should come from the council. I was not informed if it had been discussed in the council because it had been a private organization. It should have been required to pay taxes for the day.
Councillor Abade questions the 50 million peso rental fee for the Higalain market on Rio Boulevard. Councillor Roger Abade questioned the 50,000 pesos rental fee for the Higalain market on Rio Boulevard, citing the upcoming city festival as the context. According to Councillor Abade, he finds the price unjustifiable. He also inquired whether Mayor Rolando Clarex Uy and Committee on Ways and Means Chair Councillor George Goking are aware of the discussions. Councillor Abade stated, about the upcoming Higalai Festival Night Cafe held on our boulevard, it was open last December where all barangay business establishments set up their displays. We even provided incentives to make our celebration vibrant and colorful. Now during the festival, we are thankful for private organizations running programs and festivities to enhance our event. I don't know if our mayor and the chairman of Ways and Means are aware that there seems to be reamp someone contracted at our Rio Boulevard. I've received reports that some wish to set up displays but are reportedly blocked by a private person or company holding a contract there. They are asking for 50000 per spot. Meanwhile, Committee on Tourism Chair Councillor J. Rawa Pascual explained why the organizers of the Higalai market are charged 50000 pesos. Councillor Pascual mentioned that the private organizers provide their own security and use brand new tents. Councillor Pascual stated, their rent per day is 1,600 and total for 30 days, that would be 48,000 close to 50,000. So that's why they didn't ask for security. They hired their own security for the venue. And their tents are brand new, all uniform, so you notice those big bikes every year they have big bike event the city only provides electricity and water but all the portlets are clean all the dirty is wiped off they have the portlets also rent the city that's twenty thousand pesos rental and i think they have five so the security cleaning the tents <laughs>
national news. Comelec plans to issue digital voter IDs for overseas voters. The Commission on Elections is bringing back the voters ID in the upcoming 2025 elections for the first time since 2018. In a statement released on Monday, Comelec said the voter's ID will be in digital form and will be limited to overseas voters. The digital voter's ID may serve as an alternative valid ID for those who do not have a Philippine passport or seafarer's identification record available. The Comelec chairman said that they are finalizing the guidelines that may be issued next week. Overseas voters may also present the digital voters ID when they pre-enroll for internet voting in the 2025 polls. Pre-registration is from February 12, 2025 to May 12, 2025. Comelec discontinued the creation and distribution of the voters ID in 2018 pursuant to Republic Act number 110-55 or the Philippine Identification System Act. The poll body will introduce online voting for overseas voters in the 2025. Comelec tapped SMS Global Technologies Incorporated and Sequent Tech Incorporated for the online voting and counting system for the elections. With a shift to online voting, the poll body hopes to see an increase in the number of registered OFW voters for the upcoming polls. A survivor of Tokhang who feigned death seeks to reopen the case against police officers. Efren Morillo, who pretended to be dead during a Tokhang operation in 2016, has filed a petition for Pretorari before the Supreme Court for the reopening of his case against three Quezon City policemen. In his petition dated July 8, 2024, Murillo asked the Supreme Court to direct the office of the Ombudsman to file the necessary information against police respondents, Police Senior Inspector Emil Garcia, PO3 Alan Formileza, PO1 James Agarao Jr., and PO1 Melchor Navisaga for grave misconduct. Murillo filed the petition before the High Court after the Ombudsman dismissed the complaints against the policemen for lack of probable cause in the criminal charges and lack of substantial evidence in the administrative charges for grave misconduct. Joining Marilio in his petition are Marilyn Malimban, Maria Belendaa, and Lydia Gabo, relatives of the victims of the drug operation. They said the office of the Ombudsman committed grave abuse, of discretion in dismissing the charges against the policemen. The petitioners narrated in their petition that, an, that on August 21, 2016, Morillo went to the house of Marcelo Daa Jr. in Barangay Payatas to collect the money he owed to Morillo. International News Singapore state investor Temasek shifts focus to the U.S. following underperformance in China. Singapore state investor Temasek, one of the world's top funds, said on Tuesday it would prioritize investments in the United States after the underperformance of Chinese capital markets over the past year. Temasek said its net portfolio value rose 1.8% in the financial year to March 31, with growth hit by sluggish Chinese markets. That compared with a 5.2% decline the previous year for one of the world's top 10 investors. It said its net holdings stood up from 382 billion Singapore dollars. Temasek was taking a cautious stance on China after that underperformance, while the United States would continue to be the largest destination of our capital, Executive said in a presentation of the company's financial report. It said the Americas region accounted for 22% of its global exposure, the largest outside Singapore, but did not give a breakdown for the United States. Ping Chin He, Temasek's chief financial officer, said it remained underweight in the U.S. market. 
Temasek, with a global footprint extending well beyond the city-state, said its one-year total shareholder return came in at 1.60%, reversing the negative 5.7% the previous year. Its 10-year and 20-year returns were 6 and 7% respectively. Temasek has stakes in companies such as Singapore Airlines and the city state's biggest lender, DBS Group. Entertainment Did Vice Ganda reprimand Jackie because of viral video in La Union? Is Showtime regular co-host and dancer Jackie Gonzaga recently went viral after her video of dancing to the music of Water by Tyla made rounds online. The video of her sexy dance was taken in a bar in San Juan, La Union two weeks ago. During her latest endorsement launch of For Brightest Skin Essentials, Gonzaga sat down with ABS-CBN News and explained that the La Union trip was unplanned. That weekend talaga biglang na-cancel yung work ko. So sabi ko, ah, sige, sayang naman yung day, so spend the day wisely to have fun. You know, a little party. Was she drunk? Hindi naman, she insisted. After going viral, the video reached her manager, Vice Ganda. She got a message from Vice Ganda the next day asking about the viral video. Aya Arceta shares her journey to Bini in Koan on One. Did you know that Bini member Aya Arceta was discovered after she joined a Darna audition? In the second episode of ABS-CBN's mainstream Visaya talk show, Koan on One, hosted by Melai Canteveros, Aya recalled how she auditioned for Pinoy Big Brother and also for Darna. Before she graduated from grade 12, Aya had a gut feeling and told herself that she is going to Manila soon. Aya said she was hesitant to audition saying she just turned 18 but was told by her manager at the time that their main goal is to be seen and be discovered by Star Hunt. After a couple of months, she received a call from Star Hunt asking her if she is willing to go to Manila to join a girl group. According to Aya, she was the last member to join Bini, the nation's girl group known for their massive hits such as Carrera, Salamin Salamin, and Pantropico. Sports, MMA, Pasha anticipates Brooks will handle business against Ballard. One straightweight MMA world champion Joshua Pasho has no doubt that his rival Jared the Monkey God Brooks will be waiting for him when he returns from a knee injury. Brooks will take on number three ranked contender Gustavo El Gladiador Ballard for the interim one straw weight MMA world title on August 3 at 1 Fight Night 24 at the Lumpini Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand. Pasho had reclaimed the one belt in March via disqualification as Brooks had illegally slammed the Filipino on his head barely a minute into their fight at 1-166 Qatar. However, he is not counting Ballard out entirely. While the Filipino doesn't like waiting to compete, Pasho is happy to see just how far the division has grown since his debut in 2016. Aside from Brooks and Ballard, there aren't a shortage of contenders who could keep the straw weight division moving while Pasho heals up. Volleyball and you kicks off Super League campaign against Enderon. With last year's champion De La Salle University taking a leave of absence, all eyes will be on National University when the 2024 shaky Super League National Invitational open on Wednesday at the Ninoy Aquino Stadium. The Lady Bulldogs, who are coming off a championship campaign in UAAP Season 86, will have a target on their backs starting with a pool a showdown against Enderon at 12 p.m. NU will parade its veteran core led by two-time UAAP Most Valuable Player Bella Belen and Ara Panique. Also seeing action for the Lady Bulldogs are veterans Vanje Alinsug, 
Senator Ring, Erin Pangilingan, Setter Lams Lamina, and Libero Shaira Hardio. Belen and Panike will suit up for NU in their first two assignments before joining the national team Alas Filipinas in training camp in Japan. However, UAAP Finals MVP Eliza Solomon will skip the competition as she continues to re recuperate from an injury. Raising the curtains at 9 a.m. is the match up between University of San Carlos and Letran in Pool D at 2 p.m. It will be University of Santo Tomas and University of Batangas in a Pool B match. Before Pool C squads, University of Southern Philippines, Foundation and Far Eastern University cap the first day of competition at 4 p.m. Philippine Sports Commission Chairman Richard Dickey, Bachman, and Commissioner Fritz Gaston will grace a simple opening rights set at 11 a.m. International feature. The SNP 500 and NASDAQ reached new highs while European stock exchanges declined. Major U.S. equity indices edged to new records Tuesday following congressional testimony from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, while Europe's main stock markets were dragged lower by political uncertainty in France. Both the SNP 500 and NASDAQ Act out all-time highs after Powell pointed to modest progress in the battle of the counter-inflation. The Dow retreated slightly. The tech-rich Nasdaq finished at 18,429.29, up to 0.1%, its sixth straight record. But the Paris CAC 40 fell 1.2%, following on Monday's 0.6% drop, as investors spread over the results on Sunday's elections, which produced a badly divided parliament where the largest block of seats were won by a left-wing alliance. The French stock market is the weakest performer in Europe, noted Kathleen Brooks, research director at XTB. London's top-tier FTSE 100 index fell 0.7%. Dragged down by a 4% drop in BP shares after the British energy giant warned second quarter earnings could take an impairment hit of up to $2 billion. National feature supporting K pop stars transcends age for a grandmother and hypen fan. Polaroid Love is arguably one of K-pop boy band and Hypen's most popular tracks. Released in 2022 as part of the repackaged album Dimension Answer, the song about old-fashioned romance went viral on TikTok, becoming an entry point for many fans including a grandmother from the city. Arlene Fulgenshaw, 66, first heard Polaroid Love from her son, also a K-pop fan. The laid-back, catchy tune immediately piqued her interest. She was referring to the 2020 reality talent competition series that, reformed, that formed and hyped the seven-member group known for their vampiric lore, which is prominently featured in their music and music videos. Recently, Fulgen recently Fulgen show went viral on TikTok after sharing a video of herself singing not for sale her favorite and hype and song during the group's brand sponsored fan meeting in the country last may Fulgenshaw, affectionately known as lola engine or grandma engine after the name of the group's fan base proves that fandom knows no age her enthusiasm for k-pop showcases how fans come from all age groups Challenging the stereotype that such interests and exclusively for the young. <music> Trivia What led to the renaming of all social media platforms as Meta? 
The rebranding of all social media platforms under Meta refers to the remaining of the parent company that owns these platforms. Here's a breakdown of why this happened. First, corporate rebranding. Facebook, the company founded by Mark Zuckerberg, decided to rename itself as Meta in October 2021. This was part of a broader corporate rebranding strategy aimed at reflecting aimed at reflecting the company's evolving focus beyond traditional social media. Focused on Metaverse, Meta announced its strategic pivot towards investing heavily in the development of the Metaverse. The Metaverse is envisioned as a collective virtual shared space created by the convergence of virtually enhanced physical reality and physically persistent virtual worlds. Integration of platforms. Meta owns several prominent social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Oculus. The decision to unify these platforms under the Meta brand was intended to streamline operations, enhance cross-platform integration, and communicate a cohesive vision focus on building the Metaverse. Future Vision Mark Zuckerberg CEO of Meta sees the Metaverse as the next major computing platform after mobile. By consolidating under the Meta brand, the company aims to align all its efforts towards realizing this vision, leveraging its existing user base and technological expertise across its various platforms. In summary, the remaining of all social media platforms under Meta reflects a strategic shift towards embracing the metaverse and positioning the company for future growth and innovation in virtual and augmented reality technologies. It marks a significant transformation beyond traditional social media into broader digital experiences and interactions. If you found this segment informative, don't forget to click the thumbs up button, subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast with your friends and family. Your support helps us to keep you informed. Help us get 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, subscribing, and sharing our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts your visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find way and stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being a part of our community and supporting quality journalism. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.